Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I've been doing this YouTube thing for nearly four years now, but I've been blogging for almost 14 years, which is pretty remarkable to say out loud, but I've been doing it since 2010, and over that time I've developed quite the workflow for going from finding interesting things to talk about, to saving those things, to writing about those things and posting them. And today I'm gonna to walk you through my workflow that I've developed over that time. Hopefully it'll give you an idea for how this sort of thing can be done, how people who do this sort of writing do it. And it will maybe give you some inspiration for how these apps could work into your life. I don't think anyone's gonna do exactly my workflow, but hopefully this will make some sense as to how I get my stuff done and why I choose the tools that I do. So we're going to go through all seven of these services and apps today. I'm going to put chapter markers down below so you can skip to the parts that you want if you're not interested in everything. And let's jump into it. Okay, so it all starts with finding things that are interesting. And I have a ton of RSS feeds saved and synced with a service called InoReader. There's lots of services that do this. Uh, Feedbin, Feedly, um, there's other apps that do this. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, but there's plenty of options out there. If you want a free option, I'd recommend Feedly um, or the app that I'm about to show you has a built-in option uh, that you can just use natively. Um, I like InoReader because it has some rules. I'm going to make a whole video about InoReader because I think there's some cool stuff here that um, I think will appeal to people. Just know that InoReader is what I'm using to sync my feeds in uh, the background and to keep track of what I've read across different devices. Um, but we're not going to use InoReader today. We're going to use Reader, which is my RSS reading app of choice. And basically, it connects. Um, if we go into here, we can see it's connected to my InoReader account, and it syncs um, there. So everything I do here is reflected in my InoReader account and across all devices. So I have things uh, separated into folders, uh, so I can read things, I can click into a thing, and then I use keyboard shortcuts to actually just kind of navigate around quickly. And this is more of a triage thing. This is a way for me to find a ton of things to read, and I only open the things that I actually want to. I almost read nothing in Reader itself. I tend to basically go through and then, ooh, here's the thing I want to read. Hit B on the keyboard, that opens it in a browser in the background, and then I can go ahead and keep scrolling through um, everything else. So that's Reader. Again, I could do a whole video on all of these, but basically I read in the Reader app. Uh, the Reader app exists on the Mac, iPhone, iPad, um, so across all the devices, and it syncs with whatever service you have, so it's always in sync. Uh, it also works because InoReader is the back end. If you use an Android phone, you can use a different app. If you prefer a different app on your Mac versus your iPhone, you can use different RSS apps as long as they sync with InoReader. Uh, they'll all be in sync all the time. So that's it for Reader. Basically, I just key through with keyboard shortcuts, typically on the Mac, and I look for things and hit B when I'm ready to read them in the browser. So we can close Reader because we're done with Reader. Now we move on to Readwise Reader, which is uh, my read later service. So if it's a short thing, I'll just read it in the, in the web browser here. But this is pretty long, so I want to save it. And I've actually already saved this, so let me go ahead and delete this. <laughs> so this is what I would normally see. Um, and okay, this is actually too long for me to read right now. Let me save it for later. So I can just hit up here. There's a browser extension for Readwise, um, but I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, which is quicker saves it to Reader, and now it's in my Readwise account for me to read in a nice little view. So um, that's the browser extension. Now let's head on over to the web interface. And there it is. It's already at the top. And there's plenty of options for reading things later. Um, Readwise has a couple things that I really like. I've made videos about this one that go in more into depth, so you can check those out. Um, but I love reading on the Mac with Readwise because it has great keyboard shortcut support. So I can kind of Scroll through some of the things I have saved. Here's the thing I just added. So let's hit return. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts to get the uh, sidebars out of the way. And now I just have this nice reading experience that I can arrow through and kind of read the article one paragraph at a time. It's really great. Uh, they have text-to-speech on uh, the iPhone and iPad app. They don't have it on the web app, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I can read the article here. And if there's anything that's interesting about it, and let's say this paragraph is a thing that I'm interested in, I might want to quote on my blog and respond to, um, I can just use my mouse to drag and select whatever part of it I want. But if I want the whole paragraph, I don't, even, don't need to leave the keyboard, just hit H and it's highlighted. So cool, so I've got that highlighted, I can keep reading, and when I'm done, there's G, uh, Gmail style shortcuts, E will archive it, and now that article is in my archive. So now we're done with Readwise Reader. I'll usually read a couple articles at once, save whatever highlights I need, and then those highlights are synced 
to Obsidian. <laughs> so uh, this is happening using the, uh, if I go into Obsidian preferences, uh, there's community plugins and there's Readwise official. So there's this Readwise plugin that you can just search in Obsidian for. And basically it will connect to your Readwise account and sync in your highlights into text files, right? So that thing I just highlighted, uh, it actually refreshes every, um, I think 30 minutes I have it set. So let's actually sync my data now. So I have a lot of feeds, so it's gonna take a second to actually build the export, or not a lot of feeds, I have a lot of highlights, so it's gonna take a second to build the export. Um, but this is going to go, and then in a second I should see, there we go, arc search, review, um, and it's formatted with the author, the title, the category, um, the URL to it, and whatever I highlighted down here. So now I can go through the things I've highlighted, and these are all just text files, right? So this is the beauty of Obsidian. Uh, if I reveal this in the Finder, um, I can go to here. Nope, not a better computer. This is uh, my Birchtree Vault, Readwise, and you can see I have 1,200 things saved here. Um, I can just kind of see these are all just markdown files, so I can open them in any app I want, but Obsid or Omnivore is what I use uh, for this. Uh, not Omnivore, Obsidian, Jesus. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have this highlight, and you know, you can do all the um, Obsidian things here. I can search for um, all the times I've highlighted things from Federico Fittici. Okay, yeah, no idea what's going on. If I search for uh, iOS, that shows up right away. If I search for a review, that shows up right away. Fittici inexplicably shows no results. Anyway, weird thing in... Uh, Obsidian, not sure why that's happening, but anyway, we're not gonna let it divert us. Um, I have the highlight here, and okay, I want to kick off a new post. So how do I do that? Well, I'll show you how I do this in a second, but I just hit this keyboard shortcut, and it's going to, in a second, open up Ulysses, which is my writing app, and here's a new post. Arc search review, here's the author, here's the link to the page with their title, and here's the highlight from the article, right? And you can see that here, that's exactly this. And so now I can write, uh, this is my opinion, right? So I could add my thing here. Um, so how did that happen? How did I just hit a keyboard shortcut and suddenly, boom, I have this uh, blog post ready to go in Ulysses. So that's using something ironically made um, by Federico Fittici, I believe, um, called Shortcut Launcher. Uh, which is a uh, basically way to run a shortcut on a note in Obsidian. So uh, there's many ways to do this, um, but basically what I have is if I go into the settings for uh, Shortcut Launcher, you can see I have this uh, launcher called Ulysses Post. So this is going to uh, basically, it's, it's called Ulysses Post, which is what will show up in the uh, menu. Um, shortcut name, this is exactly the name of some shortcut in the Shortcuts app, and the input is the entire document. Okay, so Ulysses link post is something I need to do, so let's go to the Shortcuts app and see what this is. So this is, we're looking for Ulysses link post, here we go. And so here's a very elaborate regex heavy um, shortcut that I've created that basically takes the content from a post. So here's the text document with all the stuff. It runs a bug, bunch of regular expressions to find the URL, the author, the title, and then we generate, and then the highlight to kind of finds the last highlight, and then formats a document with those variables here, uh, sets the variable of body to this, and then I create a new sheet with the content of body, which is this, uh, in the inbox in Ulysses, and then it opens Ulysses for me. So very elaborate, um, very personal, and very specific to my use case. Um, but this is what is running on this, which generates a link post that I can do. So basically what I do from here is I'm going to write underneath this whatever my response is. It could be a sentence. It could be a whole thousand word article, um, depending on how much I want to say. Um, I really like the the way that the web works where you can read something, be inspired by it, and then write something of your own and link back to it. And then you just have this whole web of the internet linking back to itself and um, more things being created as more people create things. I think it's really awesome. 
Um, so basically, I would just change the name of this to uh, my opinion, uh, to a different headline. Um, I would leave all this, and then I'd just write my post here. Once that's ready, I can hit the publish button in Ulysses. It's going to give me a preview of what this will look like on the blog. I can hit publish, and then Ulysses has the best publishing to ghost uh, interface I've ever used in any app. Um, and so basically I can set whether it's a published article or a draft. I can schedule it for a later date. I can add a featured image. Um, I can change the URL, tags, an excerpt. Um, and then once it's done, I just have it do nothing, but you can open the editor in your browser or you can view the post online. Um, we're not going to post this one right now, but I will go back to the browser and here's the blog. And let's see, where's a good article? Um, here we go. So here's one I wrote about uh, the Oscars. Um, and so basically this was written with this exact workflow. So here's the author. And then I added some text here. Um, to kind of make it a full sentence instead of just this person wrote this article. Here's the quote uh, formatted in my style on the blog. And then everything else down here is stuff that I added on top of it afterwards. So this was kind of a longer one. Um, if we go down to uh, here's to another 40, I think this is a shorter one. So this one I added a header image here as well. Um, but this you can kind of see the format that I had. The author, colon, their article title, their quote, and then my quick response to it. And this is how so many posts on my site work. I like being able to link out to other people's work so people can see other things, not just my own stuff. Um, and I really like being able to be inspired by other people, what they have to say, um, and it helps me find other things that I want to talk about. So yeah, um, tons of posts here. If we go into the back end, um, I don't know. There's no way to see how many posts I have, I don't think. But um, it's well over 3,000 posts, and a lot of them have been created in this method, right? Here's another one, actually. Author, link, highlight, my edition. So, yeah, this is what I do to put things on the blog. Um, it's really worked out well for me, and it, it didn't come together overnight. This has been developed over many years. <laughs> um, over the course of this video, I should have put on screen um, alternative options. You could use some free, some just cheaper um, that will let you do similar things. Um, but yeah, these are the tools I use. I hope this very nerdy, very in the weeds video was interesting, and I'll see you here next time. Bye bye.